coffee's done, the juice is done. That's a way a vlogger starts a morning. Well, good morning, my friends. Your old pal, Jordan the Lion. Yep, I'm up and at it pretty early today. Today, I gotta take Jai out for a little walk and get him some exercise because, well, for one thing, I spent all night last night watching an old movie and matching up all the locations through Google Earth for something that I'm gonna vlog in Italy. I'm super excited because it's actually gonna take me to a different place in Italy than I planned on going, so I'm really, really excited now. Um, I mean, I've been excited anyway, but just knowing that now I'm gonna throw an extra vlog that will showcase a, a whole different city that I didn't plan on going to, that's really fun to think of, so pretty cool. And today, why I'm up early is because I'm meeting up with a Lionheart, and they wanted me to meet up with them at the Arboretum. So we're gonna go to the Arboretum today in Los Angeles, and that is where, for a few seasons, they filmed Fantasy Island starring Ricardo Montalban. So this ought to be fun. I've filmed commercials out at the Arboretum, but I mean on such a tiny section of it. I actually have not got to see the cottage that's out there. I haven't got to see hardly any of the grounds, and this should be pretty cool because they have trees and vegetation and wildlife kind of from all over the world out there. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Ah, beautiful day in Los Angeles. Probably a perfect day to spend it at an Arboretum. And there's Speedball. Hey there, handsome fella, how you doing? I know, I know. Well, I won't be gone all day, don't worry. Well, Ja, I leave in four days. Four days! Well, I'm thinking that Breck is gonna watch Ja while I'm gone. Problem is, I have to figure out how I'm gonna get Ja down there because I'm gonna be storing my car while I'm gone and uh, I'm gonna be doing that probably a couple of days before I um, before I depart. So I'm gonna go film any like field trips for the vlogs in advance. So it's just gonna be hard to get him to Orange County. So if I can figure out how to do that, then Breck will be hanging out over there with, uh, or Ja will be over there hanging out with Breck and he'll probably be making videos. So you'll get to see him on the uh, Days with Jordan the Lion Facebook group. Talk about double the content, you'll get my vlog and you'll probably every other day or every three days get a jaw vlog. You're making all kinds of friends, aren't you? All kinds of friends. All right, Jaws had his playtime, so I'm gonna head out. I'm going to meet up with a Lionheart, and today was their choice. We're going to the Arboretum, and then they're actually gonna take me to lunch in Sierra Madre at the oldest place in town. And per usual, I wouldn't be me if I didn't make people meet up with me at one of the creepiest places in town. Not their fault, but it can be kind of sketchy here sometimes. All right, we are approaching Baldwin Avenue, named after Lucky Baldwin. Well, we have arrived. Arboretum of Los Angeles. Now the history of the Arboretum is pretty interesting because this property itself is 175 acres wide. And it's been owned by numerous people, but the most famous owner was a man named Lucky Baldwin. And Lucky Baldwin actually saw a business opportunity in this section of town, became Arcadia, right directly across there was Santa Anita Racetrack. And Lucky Baldwin owned racehorses, was a prominent businessman around here, and one of the things that he's also known for is being the first mayor of Arcadia. Now, why he made this place successful or how he did it was Pasadena is the neighboring city to here. And Pasadena actually, it, from its founding, was a dry city. So they didn't sell alcohol. So Lucky Baldwin <coughs> became the first mayor, made Arcadia not a dry city, so all the residents of Pasadena would come here to get their liquor on. And who was the first person that Lucky Baldwin would give a, an alcohol license to? Well, his daughter, of course. His daughter would have the first liquor license here in Arcadia. So he owned this entire property. What a beautiful property it is. Tons of things have been filmed out here because of the interesting uh, vegetation that they have out here. They have plants from pretty much all over the world. So two of the Jurassic Park movies had scenes filmed out here. Katy Perry's uh, music video Roar was filmed out here. Of course, Fantasy Island, everyone knows. Uh, Madonna's Who's That Girl. 
like eight or nine Tarzan movies were filmed out here. Pretty special history. Now let's go explore it. Now right here is a, a showcase of Lucky Baldwin history. Right up here you can see the sign where it says E.J. Baldwin's Packing House. And then of course we have a, uh, a school tour here, but here are some of the pictures of the history. And here's actually Wayne's World. This is where they filmed Cassandra's music video. As well as The Love Boat. Now also, Road to Singapore was filmed here. Um, what else? That's one of those great Bob and Bing movies. And if you look right up in there, right there, you can see there's a peacock up in the tree. Also, scenes from the African Queen were filmed here. So my friend Cameron here is telling me that the uh, some of the the way that they break up the arboretum is they have it actually kind of by vegetation of region. So that's going to be kind of interesting. You can take these little offshoot trails and they'll walk you through maybe a section of Australia or you know various other parts. It's funny. The last time I was here, I was actually going through a phase where I was obsessed with stand-up paddleboarding. So I had a paddleboard that I was going out like two or three times a week. And I remember filming a commercial here, and all I kept thinking about was, I wonder if I could talk them into letting me get my stand-up paddleboard in there and float around. Never ask, though. And another thing is that usually the Arboretum, like the, the California drought has made it so that it's literally illegal to water your lawn. So this is usually like fields of green in front of you. These fun little ducks have to roam around in and uh, now you can see it's all patchy. In fact, this is a popular place for people to come out and take photos and uh, wedding photos and things like that. Now one of the common misconceptions is that, that all of Fantasy Island was filmed out here. It actually wasn't. Um, they were only out here for like two seasons from what Ricardo Montalban said. He said that how it worked was that this was originally a made-for-TV movie. There were two of them and they did so well they decided to make the TV show. So for two years they took Ricardo Montalban over to Hawaii and they would take him up trails and they would just film him walking out of a trail making a left, walking down a, a slope making a right. He said for two years they would just do all these kind of filler shots and then they realized that it was just too expensive to film there so somebody had the idea, hey why don't we go check out the Arboretum they filmed here for two years, but then they said that that became too expensive for the budget, so they got the idea, actually, Ricardo Montalban gives himself credit for it. He says that he went to the studio and said, why don't we just build a set in Burbank, make it 360 degrees that we can film around so that you won't see any exposed shots or anything. And he said for like the last three years or four years, we did it that way, and that afforded us to go have two on-location days per episode which they would film in a seven day period. So he said we would have two days where we were off on location and then the other days we would actually be there in Burbank filming on the lot. Here we go into the wilderness. Now one of the great things also about Fantasy Island was this era of TV where Love Boat was very similar where they were just, they lived on having guest appearances. So when they started filming this, all the guests would get their own trailer and Ricardo Montalban actually didn't have one. Do you feel like you're in Jurassic Park? So this section of the Arboretum is actually called the Prehistoric Forest. Now, when I said that Ricardo Montalban originally didn't have a, he didn't have a trailer, he didn't. The producers actually came to him pretty early on and said, you know what, we think if all the guests are gonna have one, you should have one too. This is, this is a series that's gonna go on for years, so we think you should have one. So he said, they got me a trailer, and he said the very next day, Hervé complained and demanded a trailer. He said that was when I realized that he was gonna be a little difficult to deal with in the making of this show. So Ricardo Montalban said that when they started doing this show, the show, the very first thing that happened, he said, was the show was supposed to be titled 
Fantasy Island starring Ricardo Montalban with Hervé Villachez. And he said, and right away, Hervé was complaining about that and wanted it to be Ricardo Montalban and instead of with, so that it would basically be giving him top billing as well. So Ricardo said, I gave in on that, but he said, as the show became more successful, he said all the fan mail and everything, he said it unfavorably changed the personality of Hervé on set. He said he was still a lovable guy when you, when we were filming, he said it's just the other times that you could see the sadness was building up in his life. Now this is Baldwin Lake, named after Lucky Baldwin. And if these ducks won't mind, I'll come down here and show you. This is the same water that you would have seen surrounding the, the shots of the Queen Anne Cottage right there. Now Cameron was actually telling me that we're about to come up on the original home of Lucky Baldwin. Right up here they kind of have it, uh, kind of a protector over it, but that original adobe was where he lived, not the Queen Anne. This was actually, and it shows you the kind of person he was, this is actually a house he had built for his guests. He gave the guests a beautiful house. One of the great things about being out here, other than the fact that it's totally serene and peaceful and there's, you know, all kinds of things to learn and see and animals and everything, but right on top of that, there are little placards everywhere telling you what everything is so you can learn, look it up, find out more where it's from. So right over here is the, the Lucky Baldwin Adobe over here. Looks like they're doing some... Uh, restoration on it. I'll probably, like I was saying, I think I'll come back out here and I'll just do something on the history of this area and Lucky Baldwin himself, so I won't delve too much into it today. Look at all this bamboo. Now you're in for a big surprise. Look at this. The Santa Anita Depot. How cool is this? And then right here on the other side of it, you can see the train tracks. That's Baldwin Avenue. And Santa Anita Racetrack over there. That's where the trail ends. Check out this old school plaque here too. Tells the whole history. Constructed in 1890. Yeah, this was a hub. Isn't this stuff great? We're gonna have to come back out here and check this out when they're open because this is a museum and it's all set up like original days inside there. I look through the window. Now let's go check out the front porch of Mr. Rourke's beautiful home. Now, if you're not up on the Fantasy Island story, it's basically this guy that you don't really know enough about to know why he's got this beautiful island out here that he invites people to, but it's their fantasy to come enjoy. And every episode would start out with us seeing Tattoo up in the tower and ringing that bell. Mr. Rourke right there on the front porch. It's Tattoo joining him. Well, here we are. Piece of California history, a piece of film history, piece of Ricardo Montalban history. There it is. As he would say at the beginning of every single show, the plane flies in every single time on the minute. And we'd see Tattoo up there ringing that bell. 
I'm gonna switch lenses and really show us that area because you can't get up there. But right here is where a Tattoo would have joined Mr. Rourke. Right there on that porch. Classic. Let's go take a closer look. And then of course, this over here is where you're supposed to believe that the, the airplane would be flying in. Wow, there it is. They'd come out of that door. Tattoo would have came out of here. And they would have been standing right out here, looking out in that opening shot. Our guests are arriving on time to the second. They always do. And you always act like it's a miracle. Check out the detail here. Looks like you're in one of Santa Claus's houses, doesn't it? Now I won't forget, don't worry, I will go put the other lens on and show us the, the tower. Now like I said, this is a show that was on for seven seasons and unfortunately, the seventh season, there was no tattoo. Ricardo Montalban said that he had been increasingly more difficult to get along with and was making kind of more obscure requests. And what he said was he said he had gotten into the hippie movement, that Hervé got into the hippie movement and was kind of unkempt and his personality started to change. And he said that at the end of the sixth season, he demanded to make the same amount of money that Ricardo Montalban was making per episode, and they just said, no, that's not gonna happen. You don't, you don't have the same type of part on the show. And some believe that it was bad advice from Villachez's agent telling him, you know, you're the guy who says the plane, the plane, you're worth the money, but unfortunately, they kind of always knew that the seventh season was gonna be the last season anyway. And so, Tattoo was gone and lost out on uh, an entire season's worth of money. Are you feeling like you're a guest on Fantasy Island right now? That's the point here. That's the point of all this wandering around and showing these classic chairs and the layout and everything here is to not only show you where it was filmed, but hopefully to take you back into feeling like you're in Fantasy Island, somewhere off the Pacific. And speaking of feeling like you're somewhere else, wait till that trip to Rome. I'm doing a filming location vlog there that I can't wait for. I just added it to the trip yesterday. Unfortunately, we can't get in. It's all locked up, but you can see inside one of the rooms here. Check that out. There's the carriage step for when the uh, the horse and buggy would have come up here in real life. They would have stepped up right here. Well, thank God for deep, deep lenses. Jennifer, thanks to you, we can see right up in that tower and take a look at that bell. That's where Tattoo would have been ringing that sucker at the beginning of every episode for, well, six, at least six seasons of it. Wow, what a cool place. Fortunately, I was not born at the time of Fantasy Island, so I haven't seen a ton of them. Just over the last two or three years, I've thought about coming out here and I've went on YouTube and watched a few episodes. It's still cool to see stuff like this. I love this. All right, well, the Arboretum has more to offer than just this, so we're gonna move on out. And hopefully, I'm gonna find that spot that we just saw in the picture where Cassandra's filming the music video. That was when Benjamin's getting her the record deal, so. 
So beyond here is actually the barn that Lucky Baldwin had, and it's got the same style as the Queen Anne cottage. But these are the original statues that were out here. Check this out. So these have been here, God, easily mid-1800s. You can see the wear on them. Patina, I guess you would say. And here's the coach barn. Wow, that might be even cooler than the Queen Anne house. Probably should have used this. <laughs> Look at this. I like that entryway. That is crazy. Just no smoking. What do you know? We have a coach. We have a few coaches. Wow. Oh yeah, did I forget to mention that Lucky Baldwin also started vineyards? Also a big reason why he was a proponent of the alcohol being sold here. This is when you come out the other side. That's where the hay would have been, I assume. Now we are heading towards the waterfall. I have to see it. I have to see it. Also pretty cool to know that Notorious was filmed out here as well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I hear it. Ducks! There it is. This is where Cassandra was standing in front of with the snake that kept falling asleep on her. In Wayne's World. Had to kind of battle the sun up there, but oh yeah, this is definitely where it was. And we're going to take these stairs up because you can get a shot over top of the waterfalls from up here. There, we're on top of it. And then we have a friendship bench over here. See that, the love and friendship. Here's a little lagoon. I can imagine Tarzan being filmed anywhere out here. I totally could see that. Look at all these flowers. There's a little cave into there. Oh, I guess I see where they do a lot of the wedding stuff, huh? Hey, how about that? Eucalyptus. Blue gum. Tasmanian blue gum. Sounds fascinating. Let's do it. That's called a club foot? That's called a panda plant. Interesting. A Madagascar cactus. We just saw this and we were going, what is that? And then right up there you can hear a woodpecker.
again. He's got stage fright. This is crazy, this walkway is the Serpent Trail. And if you notice, eventually once it kind of wraps itself around here, there's all kinds of little jewels and little mosaics along the way. And you get right up here to the snake head. We're actually standing on the head right now. There's one of the eyes. Walking on the snake's back. Christopher Columbus. Now that we're back out here and there aren't as many people here, I can show you. So check that out. There's Cary Grant out here. Right there on the, right on the deck of the Queen Anne. That must be notorious. And then there's Ricardo Montalban coming down the same steps that we were at. That was Fantasy Island. Oh, I didn't know it was filmed out here, but I think that's Sheena, when they did that Sheena reboot, Queen of the Jungle. Also, I don't see it out here, but I know that they filmed um, Lord of the Flies out here. And then of course, I can't believe this was here. I didn't know this. I'm glad that we saw this picture when we got here. Wayne and Cassandra. There you can see some scenes from Jurassic Park that were filmed out here. In the water, there's one of the rhinos, there's one of the vehicles. All right, there's the sign for Sierra Madre. That's where we're gonna go eat. And also where Invasion of the Body Snatchers was filmed. I'm gonna show you guys the square all over again. Time for some food, and we're going to the only place in town. Check out the old seating in here, this is great. This place looks great. I noticed there's a special of a pulled pork barbecue quesadilla, so I think I'm gonna get that and have some coffee. Well, there's the Sierra Madre Playhouse, but there is no way that I am freaking leaving Sierra Madre, where one of my all-time favorite movies was filmed, without going and visiting the square where the pods got dropped off. They became the pod people. So right here is the square. And actually where that Valero gas station is, there's a gas station in the movie that you see overhead as well. And Miles' office was actually right up there. He would be looking out that window. And this was his staircase. Let's see if they'll maybe let me take a look. And this would have been his office. So they actually let me come up and look out the exact window, so right there, that would have been where the Valero is. There was another old gas station there, and you see the truck come up and deliver the pods right there at the triangle. There's the answer. Must be strangers. Totally cool of them to let me do that. So now that you knew, so now that you know where the view would have been, now this will make a little bit more sense when we look at the square. So that, that big bus would have made the left-hand turn right here. Bill Pittner, Jim Clark and his wife Shirley and their kids. All right, heading back to Hollywood. I just came home, did you miss me? You did? Wow, what a great day at the Arboretum. We had a blast, and I, like I said, I've never got to explore those grounds, so it was a real eye-opener for me. And then I came home and had some mail can't wait to open this up. I think I know what it is. Wow, check that out. So I got mail. Now I'm a big Ramones fan and I've had this for years. This is the documentary on Didi Ramone because Didi Ramone used to come into a record store that I worked at when I first moved out here. So Stefan, um, a guy who I had watched play at the Cat Club when I first moved here, now watches my show and said, dude, I wanna send you some stuff. And so look what he sent me. He sent me some guitar picks of all the people. This is this is his. That's his from uh, when I was seeing them play. This is Gilby Clark's. He was in the band also at the time. He was the guitar player. He was also in Guns N' Roses. And then this is Tracy Guns from LA Guns. That's a pretty heavily used one too, you can tell. And then this is the coolest. He sent me a guitar pick from Didi Ramone's guitar case. 
I'm gonna do a DD vlog at some point, but Stefan actually has DD's last guitar, and this was one of the picks that was in there. How awesome is that? He said, dude, I wanna send this to you if you wouldn't mind giving me your address, and all I want in return is a Days of Jordan the Lion hat. <laughs> So I said, I can do that, my friend. How cool is that? Hey, hey, is Dee Dee home? Well, there you go, gang. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Was that long enough for you? About 30 minutes or more, so. I actually probably should have turned it into two days because tomorrow I'm going to have to film two vlogs because I'm supposed to work on Saturday, so. You know, that's how it goes. I don't want to miss any days, so that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you all tomorrow, and thank you, Christopher Martosh, for becoming my newest Patreon. So, have a great night. I'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.